Today, our society is caught in the middle of a global paradox involving phosphorus. On one hand, phosphorus is an essential nutrient for animals, plants, and microbes. It's as fundamental to life as carbon, water, and nitrogen. It even makes up a part of our DNA. Phosphorus is so essential to biological activity that plants rely on it for growth, and because of this, phosphorus drives crop yields in our agricultural and food systems. At the same time, phosphorus is currently sourced from non-renewable resources, where it's mined from phosphate rock. Actually, as a fun fact, there's even a phosphate mine located on the east coast of North Carolina. Other phosphate mines in the U.S. are located in Florida, Idaho, and Utah. While there's some debate on when these resources will be exhausted, many scientists now believe that our phosphate rock reserves in the U.S. will be exhausted in about a generation. Using mined phosphate, we also know that only 20% of the phosphorus applied in agriculture and entering the food system ends up being incorporated into the human diet. This is obviously an extremely inefficient system, and the reason for these inefficiencies relate to the loss of phosphorus from the food chain through binding to soils, transfers to animal waste, and runoff from agriculture. Now, I know this figure is rather complex, but it's also important to take a closer look at the inefficiencies within the global phosphorus flows. So first, starting with the mining of phosphate rock, we can see that phosphorus is consumed in a very linear way and primarily used in agricultural fertilizers. Second, these inputs into the agriculture system far exceed the outputs and large amounts of phosphorus are left in the soil, leading to legacy phosphorus in soils. Third, we can see that after cycling through the global food system, there's a loss of phosphorus through agricultural and human waste to surface waters, which can cause eutrophication and algal blooms. To further illustrate the presence of legacy phosphorus and the inefficiencies related to binding of phosphorus to soils, here's an example from North Carolina. So in our state, we know that the soils are so concentrated with phosphorus that plants in agricultural fields can often grow for decades without fertilizer reapplications. But despite the presence of this legacy phosphorus in soils, farmers still decide to apply phosphorus fertilizers, further contributing to our inefficient management of phosphorus. And to illustrate inefficiencies due to the loss of phosphorus to surface waters, too much phosphorus in the environment can lead to algal blooms, eutrophication, and even fish kills from depleted oxygen levels. The picture on the right is a fish kill event originating from phosphorus pollution. And relative to pre-industrial levels, we know that our society has increased phosphorus concentration in surface waters by 400%. And our coastal dead zones are expanding at a rate of about 10% per decade. As the world's population continues to grow and many places in the world increasingly prefer meat in their diets, these problems are expected to only worsen. So on one hand, we rely heavily on phosphorus to support our societies, largely through agriculture production, but on the other, it's a non-renewable resource that may be exhausted in about a decade. There are extreme inefficiencies in our phosphorus management system, and it's resulting in water pollution and ecological damage. Now, how are we going to balance all of this information together to manage our phosphorus supplies effectively and sustainably? And because there are so many different pieces of the phosphorus sustainability puzzle, some have even called this a wicked problem. And to solve wicked problems, we need new interdisciplinary solutions. Such interdisciplinary solutions for phosphorus management are being developed in a new NSF-funded Science and Technology Center headquartered here at NC State. This center is called the Science and Technologies for Phosphorus Sustainability, or STEP Center. STEP's headquarters are located in the new Plant Science Building on Centennial Campus. The STEP Center is in partnership with seven other universities and research institutions. And currently, STEPS has around 40 senior investigators, 40 graduate students and postdocs, as well as undergraduate students. As mentioned, managing phosphorus is a wicked challenge and requires interdisciplinary solutions. Our STEP Center is therefore guided by the long-term vision of a 25% reduction in mined phosphates and a 25% reduction in phosphorus losses to soils and water, all within a 25-year time span. To realize this vision, we're focusing our research efforts on the demand side by first improving efficiency of phosphorus use in agricultural systems, including research on new materials, crops, and processes to make soil-bound phosphorus bioavailable to crops. So our research efforts will also focus on capturing phosphorus from animal manure for reuse as fertilizers. So in addition to improving efficiency, 
We are also investigating ways to reduce phosphorus losses to soils and water resources from point and non-point sources. This includes research on new materials and crops to trap dilute phosphorus, which will prevent eutrophication. For example, there are some new materials being considered for use in fresh waters that can bind phosphorus, trapping it and removing it from the water column. In addition, we're working on developing new materials and technologies that can capture phosphorus directly at point sources, such as capturing phosphorus from human urine. STEPS research, in fact, spans 17 orders of magnitude and length scale, which extends all the way from the nanoscale to human technology scale and regional and global scales. Across these orders of magnitude, we're developing new materials and processes to capture, recover, and reuse phosphorus from surface waters, wastewaters, manure, and soils. In implementing these new technologies and materials in surface waters and the plant soil microbial systems using lab, greenhouse, and field scale techniques. I should also mention that because managing phosphorus is a wicked challenge, we know that science and technologies will not be enough. Rather, we recognize the importance of combining science, technology, and innovation, along with social sciences, communication, and stakeholder engagement. For this reason, we have four pillars that are designed to help ensure that our science and research is as societally relevant and sustainable as possible. This includes stakeholder engagement in which we're engaging external stakeholders through a set of formalized processes, convergence research that enables synergies and collaboration throughout the center, education where we're training and educating researchers and students in convergence research related to sustainable phosphorus management, and diversity where we're involving more than 50% of STEPS members to be women and members of systemically excluded groups. So in conclusion, we know that managing phosphorus in food and agriculture production, the environment and society is a wicked challenge and requires interdisciplinary solutions. Through our center, researchers and stakeholders are collaborating together to develop and co-create solutions. These solutions will ultimately reduce our dependence on mined phosphates through improved efficiencies to better utilize and reuse phosphorus from wastes, as well as reduce phosphorus losses to the environment through the development of new materials and technologies to create more sustainable systems. If you would like to become engaged with the SEF Center or learn more about what we're doing to improve phosphorus sustainability, you can follow us on social media and check out our website for news and information. Among other opportunities, we'll be hiring graduate students, postdocs, as well as recruiting undergraduate students to become involved in several research projects. We also host several open house events where students, faculty, and members of the public are welcome to attend, listen to a seminar talk, and engage with members of the center. And finally, you're always welcome to contact us for more information about the center and ways to help solve the wicked challenges of our phosphorus paradox.